Hey everybody. Final thoughts, time for Helios. Alrighty, well, it's a pretty neat game, I gotta say. I, you know, it's, it's, first of all, it's gorgeous. It looks really, really lovely. You know, all very, very bright and sunny, as is appropriate considering the theme. The theme itself, I talked about this a little bit in the intro, it's, it's a very strange theme, this weird fantasy planet populated by elves who, I guess, worship the sun. And, I mean, I guess really the theme is not that you're actually literally, you know, changing cosmology and forcing the sun to move around different places. I, I, guess, I guess the theme is that, you know, when you pray to the gods by doing, the, you know, the, pray to the sun god by doing one of these actions, it basically means it'll be sunny wherever the sun, wherever you end up moving the sun tile. And that's why the people are able to work in that area and generate the goods they need to generate, or they go to the temple and they worship. So I guess it kind of makes sense if in the whole, oh, the sun gods will, you know, we pray to them and it'll make it sunny where we need it to be sunny. So I guess, I guess I can, I can live with that theme. It's a little weird and abstract, but it kind of makes sense in a kind of, you know, ancient religion, uh, you know, fickle gods kind of way. And, you know, the game itself, obviously, there's a lot going on with only 16, well, actually, Jen and I found every time we played, we've each of us been able to get three bonus actions um, every time we played, and we also get the four. So I was going to say with 16 actions, but it's really with 20 actions, because we always, in a two-player game, end up getting three actions, and we each build the building that gives us that extra action. So with 20 actions, you don't have much time to do a lot of stuff, and it really does feel like you get you know, really a lot done in a very short time, and you get very different strategies to pursue as well. I mean, in this game I just did, where I only won by, what was it, four points, um, you know, you compare Jen's to mine, I mean, she's got all these tiles really, really big, you know, three followers that scored her a ton of points, whereas me, I just drilled the sun, I just kept pushing the sun over and over and over again, and, you know, took that to a win. Um, and every time we played, it's always been a different combination of things. Now, I will say, um, I don't know that this game is at its best with two. It, mechanically, it's perfectly sound, plays very, very nice. But, and you know, and the, uh, the scaling, the only scaling they do is that it's only every other round that we refill the action columns. And that all works just fine. But I don't know, with only two players, it strikes me as very, very strange that we do tend to get so many bonus actions that each of us gets three. With more players, there'd be a lot less of those going around because everybody, there'd be a lot more, you know, trouble and strife trying to get those matching four of a kinds. So it'd be much trickier to do. And another thing too, in every game we played, between the two of us, we bought almost all of the uh, helpers as well. This was actually an odd game where two of them didn't get bought. I think, um, you know, we've either had all of them bought or only one of them not bought. But even still, it just, it, it feel, I, I, I've never, I've only played it with two, but I really can't help but shake the feeling that I think the game would be much more satisfying with four players or, or three players because they're, you know, things would be a little bit tighter. You, I mean, right now, the game, it's kind of Monty Hall-ish. You can pretty much do anything you need to do. You get more than enough opportunity to do it because they didn't scale down the, uh, you know, the, the number of, of these followers. They didn't, and with only two players, there are so many tiles, you can always shoot for getting those four of a kinds without having to compromise too terribly much on your overall strategy. Where I suspect with more players, you would have to compromise more because it'd be tougher to get a four of a kind. And um, so I think probably the game would be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more, oh, what tough choices I have to make with more players. Now, of course, that's often the case. And again, there's nothing mechanically wrong with the way it scales down. It just feels like when we're playing the game, it is a little bit too Monty Hall-ish because we're playing a two-player. Also, the other thing that I have a slight issue with is the game starts out in exactly the same setup every single time. It's always the same advisors who are available. You know, it's always the, uh, you know, I mean, it's always the same tiles you can buy. There's one unique tile. There is randomness to the, uh, to the, the, the action tiles, you know, the, the way the colors come out in the columns, that's obviously very random. But again, in a two-player game, you're going to get half of those tiles, half of the tiles you see without too terribly much competition. So even though there's some variety with these tiles that come out here, I don't think it's enough to really, um, you know, make the game's start feel very unique. It, 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 
And again, you know, a lot of people don't have a problem with that. Um, but for me and Jen, something we always like to see is when we sit down to play a game, that the circumstances, the combination of elements that are in that particular game make the game's beginning feel very, very different. Now, this game doesn't do that. It feels the exact same. When you sit down at the beginning of the game, you're all, it's always going to feel the exact same, particularly because you get to choose what your starting tile is. At the very least, I mean, we find it's a little bit better because we randomly, we randomly select what our starting tile is, and that makes a difference. But it seems like the game is really designed with, well, yes, it should be like a chessboard. It does start out exactly the same every single time you play, and then you just pursue different strategies. Now, I've talked about that before, and how that's really not something that Jen and I particularly it's not our favorite thing. There are a few games out there where the board is set up the exact same way every time and you know we'll go with it, but by and large that's something that kind of turns us off and that's definitely the case with Helios. I do wish there were more of these bonus tiles and only you know eight of the 16 that came with the game are available every single time you play. Or you know something just to make it feel like yeah this is going to be very different as opposed to yeah I could do the exact same thing this time that I did last time. Because that, if any, that's my only complaint. Now, I don't believe that would be capable of happening, again, in a four-player game. Because you've got so much random chaos. You've got so many things um, changing from game to game. Because the more players you put in, the more random, un unpredictable stuff happens. But with two players, you know, it's pretty easy to make a plan and stick to it. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it, it, it just does make the game maybe just a little bit less media, a little bit less, ex we're a little bit less excited to sit down and see, right, what's the game got in store for us this time? We know what it has in store for us. As a two-player game, the exact same thing it had last time and the time before that and the time before that. So that just makes us a little bit less excited to sit down and play. But that's just us. I know a lot of people, I have no problem with that at all. In fact, a lot of people think it's good that the game is the exact same scenario every single time you start, and it's up to you to pursue different strategies. But Gen I, that's just not our preference, so that's why it kind of knocks Helios down a little bit. I mean, Helios, I think, it's, you know, its mechanisms are great, really like a lot. You know, love the escalation, you know, love the doing little things at the uh, beginning, big things at the end, all that stuff is great. But uh, still, I think it's going to be kind of a 7 for us, whereas, you know, it could have been an easy 8 because the mechanisms are solid, really, really good stuff if it had had more random variable setup, which it just doesn't. Heck, maybe there'll be an expansion for it someday in the future and they will add a bunch more of these guys and that will do the thing that radically shakes up the start game. But for now, now the game, that's kind of where, that's kind of how we're looking at it. We like it, we definitely enjoy playing it, but then, um, you know, if we're thinking about playing it, we're like, well, do we want to play that? Well, we kind of already know before we sit down what it's going to feel like, as opposed to Istanbul, which you know, I, I picked up at the same time as this, that has the radically different setup every single time of a hugely different board, where, well, gosh, I have no idea what the board's going to look like and what's going to be close to everything else and, you know, and all of that. Um, that, to me, is the only thing Helios is missing, and so it's a slight miss for me and Jen because of that. But... Don't let our opinion shake you, because really, you should decide for yourself. I just did a full run-through of the entire game from start to end. I very rarely do that. Hopefully, you have a pretty good idea of whether it'd be a game for you, because there's a lot to recommend here. Tons of different strategies you can pursue, really great paths to victory, great escalation, wonderful, beautiful components, um, you know, very, very thought-provoking gameplay, lots of really good stuff in Helios. Okay, folks, that's it. Thanks for watching. Comments, questions, concerns. As always, let me know. Mistakes. You know the drill. I'll get them noted up, or actually Paulo will get them noted up if you let, tell us where they happened in the video. And otherwise, I'm going to stop right there and wish you guys a very happy, very sunny day. It's beautiful, 80 degrees here in Malta. I might take the dogs for a walk in the sun now that I've just been playing around with this fake sun for two hours. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.